Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. Come to look at a Ford Transit Connect here. So the customer's already got it running and he bonnet it up for me. I haven't had a look at it yet, but this is the engine we're looking at. 1.5 TDCI, one of these newer ones. Okay, it's got that sign on the dash, exhaust filter over limit, spanner sign, and that uh, engine management light on down there. And if we press OK, what happens? So it just that just skips it off. Using the launch Eurotab 3, we're going to set up a diagnostic scan. And I'll do a high speed scan. And we found a few faults there already. Okay, let's see what we have. ABS battery voltage faults. TCM correlation between manifold pressure. All right, I've seen that before. P2463, the usual P246C. Airflow in range but higher than expected. Nitrous oxides sensor performance. All right, well, I'm not going to pay attention to this one for now because I'm not sure if that's going to be just triggered off with these, but maybe an ox sensor maybe need looking at. But all of this. I know what's going on here without even having to look at the car so we're gonna well I'll show you anyway we're gonna have to set up a smoke test so I've got the air inlet pipe off I'm gonna connect up a bladder in here I want to get that pumped up using the launch smoke detector switch it on and we'll give that a couple of minutes we're probably gonna see smoke coming from this area here got a spanner here ready to open it I've done dozens of these now they always leak from here you can see there looks a little bit oily okay looks like we've got smoke from there so we're gonna open it up and we'll see where the leaks coming from okay so we've got that disconnected it's just a couple of clips and a little 10 mil bolt down there holding this plastic in place and if we switch flip it over you can see the underside there that's where they split okay so i've cleaned that up and now i've put some glue in there i'm just gonna glue that up temporarily because the part is not available right now we're gonna have to get that ordered up so just a temporary repair we'll put some glue on that and tape it just to hold it from expanding get the replacement part ordered up and we can get that fitted so just for now of course we'll just do a temporary repair on this so we can actually clean the dpf we're not going to be able to clean the dpf with a boost leak so just get this leak sealed up and then we can clean the dpf once the new pipe comes in we'll get that fitted okay so i've glued it up we've just put a bit of tape on it to stop it expanding so the glue doesn't rip apart. That's, it's only just for a day, basically. The new pipe's going on maybe tomorrow. This is one, is, it's only done 35,000 miles. So yeah, relatively low mileage. Okay, DPF pressure we have at idle 25 to, well, it was going to 36, 38, but 25 to 31, basically. Uh, now the DPF on these is very very weak so you do not want to try and do a force regeneration on one of these um, you're better off trying to lower that soot by cleaning the DPF uh, gonna do it with it on the car with the revs up at 3000 rpm we have around about 180 millibars of pressure now the engine is cold so that will creep up over 200 as I get the temperature up here Obviously, as the temperature increases, the metal uh, contracts, or the DPF contracts, and you can see there, you see the pressure's rising as it gets hotter, look. It's going over 200. Right, we'll switch it off, let it cool down. We don't want it to get too hot because we don't want to put the DPF cleaning fluid in with a hot DPF. Now, I have been asked that question before. Yes, I do put the cleaning in with a with a warm engine. I've got asked the question, Is it do you do it with a hot engine or a cold? It's, it's neither. It's, it's neither cold or hot. You can't have it, say, at regen temperature, which is 600 degrees. Um, but 
I like to have it over say around 100 degrees ish and then we'll clean it from there so if we're looking at the engine from here just down here we have the clip for the DPF pressure hose so I've removed the clip now we're just removing the hose there it is so now I just connect the nozzle of my DPF cleaning gun into that then I get the gun and attach that to my compressor that's set to 130 psi and squeeze the trigger we'll just spray all of this fluid in there Okay, so that's all of the fluid empty. Disconnect that from there. Reconnect it to the sensor. Just push that up there and we'll get that clip. Just squeeze it together and pull the clip back up into place. Just like that. So this gun that I'm using to clean the DPF and the DPF cleaning fluid is available from this place here, Launch UK. So their website is on online, of course. Uh, so I've mixed that 50% of that fluid into the bottle and we've sprayed that directly into the DPF there. Now one other thing I would mention is I probably would have tried to order a boost pipe for this and bring it with me because um, I you know i've done these jobs so many times you, you know what all of the common things are but uh, i was told this just came from you know when the guy called me it came from a garage he said it was at a garage and they'd done some repairs on it um and they couldn't get to the bottom of the dpf issue so he said it just needs dpf cleaning because you know some work has been done he, he wasn't sure what uh some attempts to do repairs and so i was maybe assuming okay they've obviously already done the pipe now they just need the dpf thrown out but of course it's not the pipe is still broken and yeah before anyone mentions it's not a pipe it's a hose yeah it's bad habits for me i'm always just chucking words at stuff that i'm usually saying i remember on one of my videos i saw when i grabbed one of these i said oh, i'll just grab a spanner and open the open this and yeah people had a lot of fun in the comments that's not a spanner you're not a real mechanic it's just habit of words that you use, you know. Yes, I know that's a ratchet and that's a socket. Okay, let's get back in the vehicle here and try and get this sorted out. Get the engine started up. We'll hold the revs again back up around 3000 RPM. Hold them there for a few minutes. Now you probably notice that the pressure is a little bit higher because of course that soot is breaking down the soot. As it begins to break it down, it will temporarily block the DP up, DPF up. A little bit more uh, but you'll quickly see that coming back down now so we're on 10.53 as we start and you'll see a lot of smoke coming from the exhaust or it's not smoke really it's it's just vapor from the steam and you'll see there that the pressure is dropping You normally see that around 40 or 50 HPA at these revs. That is 3000 RPM. So once we're under 100 there on that, I'm pretty happy with that really, as it is, but that will come down. We're going to hold the revs for another minute maybe. As we let that idle down you can see there the pressure is low now these vehicles do behave normally like that this one they do fluctuate up and down they don't hold a steady uh, HPA reading but yeah that is normally where you'd like to see them there so now we just need to wait for that vapor to die away we'll just give it a few revs up and down like this get it cleared see a lot more smoke as we do that. 
Now that the exhaust is getting hotter. Okay, now I'll switch the engine off. We'll come out of the live data. I'm going to go to special functions. And we need to find the option to reset the DPF. Let's have a look. Got particle filter regen there. Reset the particle filter learned values. This one. Yes, we'll do that. Turn the ignition off. Okay. Okay, so that's all complete. Now we can come back to the fault codes. Press clear the fault memory. That will allow us now to delete those DPF fault codes. Okay, we haven't got the ignition on. We need to do that first. That's more like it. Now we should be able to read the codes and there should be none there. Yes. Okay, so that's it. All the faults are cleared. If we clear the bonnet sign, that's it. We are all about done. So that's it now. Let the van, the van idle for a couple of minutes and the steam will die away and I'll see you on the next video.